So we are currently running a Raspberry Pi 5 Bitcoin node. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you how much it actually costs to run a Bitcoin node. So there's an initial cost of obviously the hardware, and then there's going to be a power cost overall. We do have slightly higher power cost in the UK, but they may be different for you around the world. We're also solo mining to our own node, so that's gonna up the power cost as well. But in today's video, we'll get into all the figures, how to calculate it yourself, and other potential losses that you might see while running a Bitcoin node. So let's head over to the computer and get into the video. Okay, so here is our Bitcoin node. And if you guys wanna learn how to actually set up your own Bitcoin node, I do have a video, I'll link it in the description. This is the same setup that we're using. We're using a Raspberry Pi 5 and we're running Umbrel to that Raspberry Pi 5. And then we're also running three apps. One's called Bitax Sentry. You don't really need to worry about that for your node running, but the main one is gonna be either a Bitcoin node on call or Bitcoin knots, and then running an instance of public pool so we can actually mine into our Bitcoin node with our solo Bitcoin miners. As I said, today we're gonna to be looking at how much it actually costs to run a Bitcoin node. So there's no real figure that I can give you in terms of how much it will cost you because it is very dependent on three things. Firstly, gonna be the hardware that you're using. I'll do it for the Raspberry Pi 5, but if you are running a node in a different way, then you're gonna to have to calculate that out yourself. And then the second reason would be your power cost. So electricity cost is going to be the main cost of actually running a Bitcoin node. And then lastly, the cost of the hardware and if you're using Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin Knots. So there's technically four, but we'll cover all of them in this video. So let's just start on an easy one. Bitcoin Core versus Bitcoin Knots. I know we made a video on this previously. Bitcoin Core, technically, if you don't have any of the settings kind of tuned to what you want in terms of the mempool, it is actually gonna draw more power because you're not just doing financial data like Bitcoin Knots is. So it's gonna draw more power and require your node to process more things. So technically it will actually draw more power from your node in the long run. So that's just something to think about when you're choosing your node software. So you can run any of these, they are still full nodes and they do function as nodes. And you can also mine into both of these node running softwares. So that's one of the main things. And then the second thing is obviously you having other apps on your umbrella. So public pool, if you actually wanna mine into your own node, that's gonna cost you a little bit more because you're also running a process for public pool. And it's kind of going based off of this. So you can see the usage on the system here. So you can have system here, Bitcoin node, public pool, Bitax Sentry. So they're all gonna jump up and down in terms of the actual percentage of the CPU used and the memory. So that's gonna draw more power to the Raspberry Pi 5. But if you only have a Bitcoin node, then it's a very easy calculation that we can do. The third thing, as I said, is the power cost to your node. So the power cost is obviously changing dependent on region. And that is going to be the main factor, I believe, in terms of how much it's going to cost. So we'll go over how much it costs for a day and then a year on this node particularly. And then we'll cover kind of what it would look like with different power costs around the world. But that's going to be the main factor that you see as well. So initial cost for all of these parts, including the Raspberry Pi 5 and the power, plus the ethernet cable, plus the SD card, plus the SSD and case, that comes around to $250. And then you're gonna have to pay the electricity price on top of that. So initial investment is around $250 for this whole setup that you see here. And then the electricity price is going to be an extra cost daily on top of that but we'll get into those calculations later on. So if you're just running a node, we can do a simple calculation for that. But if you're running extra bits on top of it, then that is gonna cost more. Lastly, we are gonna show you the figures for just our Bitcoin node, but the hardware that you're using is still gonna make a very big difference. So in the video, we did say that you can run it on a Raspberry Pi 4, but I recommend a Raspberry Pi 5. Technically, they're more efficient, so your power draw to how much output you're getting is gonna be a little bit better off than the Pi 4. But you have to factor in, of course, the SSD in terms of how much that is actually gonna draw from your power. Because we're using a two terabyte SSD, that's gonna draw a little bit more power than just a one terabyte SSD. 
these older versions are slightly less efficient than the newer versions. So keep that in mind when you're calculating your own cost for the node. I want to mention as well, if you're new into node running, it doesn't actually cost you anything to install this software. So you don't have to pay anything in terms of downloading this software. It's all free out there for you to download. The only thing that I do want to be careful of is that I believe if you open up a lightning node on top of this core node, then you are going to have to pay to open channels. So if you want to get into running your own lightning node, it's going to be a little bit different and you'll have to pay extra to actually put into the node with the hopes that it gets paid back a little bit more in the future. But we'll cover that in another video because lightning is slightly a bit harder than just running your own Bitcoin node. So it doesn't cost anything to actually run the physical node. The main power draw is also going to be from actually initial syncing. It doesn't draw that much power when you're doing day to day and fully synchronized blockchains. It will spike in terms of the power just to update the next block in the chain. As I said, we will give you figures on the Raspberry Pi 5, but if you are using anything else, it's going to be very dependent on what hardware you're using. So I can't give you an accurate figure for things like I've seen a lot of people using these Lenovo's, the Think Centers to upgrade and then use that as a node. The initial cost is definitely lower than what you'd have on a Raspberry Pi 5, but I think these are slightly older, so the efficiency is not going to be as good as the Raspberry Pi 5. And that goes to say for everything else basically out there in terms of a fully functional computer, they just tend to draw a lot more power than a Raspberry Pi. So now let's get into the calculations that we have for the Bitcoin node running. So currently this node pulls around 15 watts. So that's going to be 15 watts per hour. And then we have to times that by 24 hours times by 24. So that's going to give us our daily wattage for how much watts we've actually used on our Raspberry Pi 5. And then we actually have to convert this into kilowatts. So we just do that divided by a thousand and that gives us 0.36 kilowatts and then we times that by our energy cost. So this is the main thing. The energy cost is going to be dependent on you. We currently have an energy cost of 26 cents per hour. So we just times this number by 0.26 by there. That gives us a figure of around 10 cents per day to actually maintain and run this node. And then we can do a quick calculation for 365. So times by 365 as that's our daily rate. But now we can go to our yearly rate, which is around $34 overall for the year in power cost just to run this node. You don't actually get anything back from it. So a lot of people in the comments of our node running video, were talking about how much does it actually make. Bitcoin nodes on their own don't make any money. If you are going to mine to a Bitcoin node, you have the potential to actually make money in the future. If you do hit a Bitcoin block or if you're mining to an external node or pool mining with other people, you have potential to regain some of this money back. But just the Bitcoin node on its own doesn't actually repay anything. So overall, initial cost for the year is going to be $34. And then we plus $250 to give us the price kind of the first year that you actually buy the node. So 250 is the price of the Raspberry Pi 5 setup that we did in our video. And then the $34 on top of that for how long, for how much it's going to cost to run every single year. So I want to mention as well that our Bitcoin node running video, we have kind of future proofed this. So you don't have to actually upgrade any of the hardware probably for the next 10 years in in terms of the storage, so your SSD has two terabytes and the blockchain is currently at around 890 gigabytes overall. So you don't really need to upgrade for quite a while. So that means you're gonna be spending less on hardware overall if you keep running your node. So as I said, that's only a calculation for us, but we can actually change the calculation to show you for different kilowatts per hour percentages. So we take this number, which was down here, divided by a thousand, so our kilowatts per day, and then times it by, I know a lot of people have 10 cents, but we'll start at that. So 10 cents per kilowatt hour, you're spending around four cents per day. Let's grab that calculation back and then we can times by 0 0.15, 0 0.15. And that gives us around five cents per day at a price of 20 cents per kilowatt hour. You're looking at around seven cents per day. And at 25, you're looking at around nine to 10 cents per day. If you have anything higher than this, then you're probably in a region that doesn't have good power supply. 
and it's going to cost you quite a lot in the overall long run to actually run a node. I know a lot of America has lower energy prices to a lot of the rest of the world, to the rest of the world. So if you are in America, you could take advantage of the lower energy cost. If you are in a region that has lower energy costs and you want to run a node slash computer, so not the Raspberry Pi 5, then maybe you can go for a Think Center as well, as your power cost is not going to be as high as just running a Raspberry Pi 5 in a higher electricity country. So that is the kind of calculation. We're going to spend around $34 per year. We're currently pulling slightly more than that overall because we have public pool running and we have this BitAx Sentry running. So we have different apps running. The more apps that you're going to run on your node, the more apps that you run on the Raspberry Pi 5, obviously the more watts it's going to consume. But overall, there shouldn't be that much variance in it. I believe that the power connector goes up to around 27 watts. So that's the maximum you can ever pull through the Raspberry Pi 5. So we can do a calculation to find out what the maximum usage would be. So maximum usage per day would only be around 15 to 16 cents per day on the Raspberry Pi 5. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As I said, the Bitcoin node doesn't cost anything to run. It only costs power to run. And then you are going to have to input more money or sats if you want to run a lightning node as that has some financial gain to it. The Bitcoin node doesn't have any financial gain to it unless you're trying to mine a Bitcoin block. So if you have any questions on how much it costs, let me know in the comments. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.